In this presentation, we're going to talk about caching and what, what caching is and, and how to optimize your code so that you can take advantage of the cache. So two concepts we need to talk about. The first is temporal locality. This is the high probability to access the same block of data in near future. Okay, So it's time-based. It has to do with time. That, that Chances are if you access one piece of data now, you're going to access it again in the, in the near future. Spatial locality has to do with um, location, that where the data is. So this is where, when a high probability that adjacent data in the same block will be needed soon. So when you're programming, if you don't take these things into account, you may give up a lot of performance because you're not taking advantage of, of the cache. So here we have an overview of how you can optimize performance. You can improve performance by increasing data locality. And there are countless ways to slice data into pieces that are easy for CPUs to digest. So let me just mention three common ways. Making your data contiguous, packing your data, using a technique called hot-cold splitting. Okay, so here you see a class called Game Entity, and that contains three other classes, um, actually arrays of classes, AI component, physics component, and render component. Okay, and you can see those three uh, classes over here, and you can see the private data, which uh, contains pointers to those classes. And the way it's used here is in order to do an update, you just go through the, the number of entities. You do all the AI updates, then all the physics updates, then all the render updates. Now, if you take a look at the chart that I've drawn on the right, this is actually all going all over the place. Um, there's no real continuity to it. But if you restructure the way you're, you've allocated your memory, and instead of creating the classes, each, each of which have three different um, objects. Instead, now I have an AI component block that has all the AI components, all the physics components, and all the render components. And they're in a contiguous block of memory. And you can see over on the right side that the way we do the update is different. We're not doing it based on a class. We're doing it based on this um, array of, of, of components. Okay, And in this way, what happens is you have a better chance of that data getting cached because it's all contiguous instead of spread out all over the place. So even if you have contiguous memory, um, you might be going through a really long list, and chances of the long of a really long list being um, cached is, is less than a smaller list being cached. So here we've got a particle system for a game, and notice that it's got one long um, allocated block. And when it does the update, it just goes through and looks to see if a particular particle is activated. So it could go through quite a bit of the list before it gets to a, an activated particle. But we could actually change the code to where we only have to look at active particles during the update. And when we do this, when, when everything's packed into the active particles array, everything's sort of more concise, and there's still a better chance of this data getting cached. The last thing I'd like to mention is called hot cold, cold splitting. On the left we have this AI component object. And notice it's got um, the loop type, min drops, snack drops, chance of, it's got all the data for the AI component. However, if we split it up between the stuff that's actually active, fairly active, and the stuff that's not fairly active, what we're doing is the stuff that's fairly active um, we're, we're making a smaller class that is going to have a better chance of being uh, held in contiguous memory and thus a better chance of being cached. So in conclusion, because of caching, the way you organize your data directly impacts performance. You need to carefully consider what you're doing as you create data and data structures. <laughs>